You're listening to the VIC 757 Podcast featuring Dwight and Michael Vick talking all things tech. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another edition of the VIC 757 Show talking all things Virginia Tech. I'm your host, Dwight Vick, former VT offensive lineman, all-conference, the captain, uh, with my co-host, my young cousin in the building again, Mike Vick. How you doing, All cousin? things tech. What's up, cuz? <laughs> What's good, man? All things tech. I love it. Yes, Another yes, week. Yes. Another week, man. So, um, real quick, man, because we got a jam-packed show, man. We got, we got some... Oh, you got it popping today. You got it popping today. Hey, every time it gets live, it gets better. The feedback's been great. So yeah. real quick, man, before we break down, before we have uh, our first guest up to break down um, the win over Richmond, man, um, how's everything going? Did you check out the Hokies against Richmond? Yeah, I seen them against Richmond, cuz. And, and and that I feel like that game was how all the games were supposed to look. You know, I mean, the, the touchdown pass in, in the back of the end zone and just the connection, you know, it was a lot of fluidity in the game. So I, I'm so looking forward to the next couple of weeks. Yeah, we got a big matchup. No game this weekend against uh, – no, no matchup, no game this weekend. Then we got a bye week, and then we got Notre Dame coming. They got a tough matchup against Cincinnati, and then they come to Lane Stadium for a second time uh, to face off Tech. They should be ranked regardless of what they do this past weekend, this upcoming weekend against Cincinnati. So yeah. I know the game was just announced on Twitter that it was sold out. So it's going to be a lot of lot of lot of people looking forward to that game. Hokie Nation, I know they're going to do their part. The question is, when Tech coming off this off week, are they going to do their part to give right. Hokie Nation a lot to cheer for? Now, coming off a of bye week, it's always tough. You and I both know you. you have, it feel like a mini vacation, but <laughs> it, it, you know it feel like a mini. But it's not. It, it's a chance to decompress, get your body back right, catch up on some minor injuries. Yeah. Um, and especially being so early in the season, we just got to stay focused. We got to keep the, the gritty mindset intact. Yeah, no doubt. And, you know, it's interesting, too, because I was looking and reading online. Uh, it's also interesting, too. And I didn't even think about this because you and I, had, I didn't have to deal with it. But they got to they got to take care of their health, too, because COVID is real. Yeah. So contact tracing, guys going home, I'm, things like that. You got to be smart. You, know you what, come back. Man, I you mean, you got to. Yeah, you just got to think about all the, all things considered. And, you know, as a player, a young player, any free time, you want to go the extra mile to get somewhere. Mm-hmm. And, and now it's the time to kind of focus on the season. You know what? I think about football like this. And even as an older, you know, guy who was just still just ingratiated in the game, I'm still entrenched in it. I still think about the things that I should have done. And I think that's mm-hmm. a good thing because now I can pass that down. I'm pretty sure you do the same thing. Pass down those small, you know, little tidbits that kids can just take and and, and it, it can take them a long way. You yeah, know, and yeah. there's things that we didn't do. So each one teach one type of method, man. That's what that's what I'm on, cuz. That's how I'm on it, for real. No doubt. No doubt. No doubt, man. I'm with you, man. Well, Let's get some help to break down um, the matchup with Notre Dame and also check on reflecting on Tech and what they did against Richmond. Our first guest is our guy, Danny Noakes. He's joining us right now, man. Live from Richmond, live from the 804. He's joining us, man. He's coming in to talk and reflect on the game against uh, the Hokies against Richmond. Danny Noakes, what's good? What's going on, fellas? How we doing? Oh, we doing great, man. We, we doing, we, we doing great. What's up, Danny? My son came in here. He got his Nintendo <laughs> Switch, and he trying to get me to change the game and to change the settings. And uh, yeah, you know, hey. it's family life over here, Danny. How you doing? I'm good, man. Hey, I got a Nintendo Switch too. So anytime you and your you and your boy want to link up, we got you know we got the sticks over here too. <laughs> hey, anything is possible with the online gaming now. You got to do that. So this is going to be our new segment. With the segment, Danny is my co-host on the Victory Life Legacy podcast. He also does radio uh, shows in DC for 106.7 The Fan DC, covering 
not just Virginia Tech, but the Maryland Terps, as well as the Washington football team. I won't call Danny an insider, but he's a Hokie grad. He also knows Tech very well. He used to do the pregame show with Cal Bailey before John Lazer and Mike Burnoff. So he knows Tech, man. So, Danny, welcome to the VIX 757 show. You and I go way back. You've actually interviewed Mike when Mike used to jump on with Cal Bailey when he would make his appearance on Cal Bailey in the clubhouse. So this is the first time you guys have met virtually. So um, we want to get you on. We want to get you on, man. It's a weekly segment. I want your thoughts, though. Let's talk um, talking all things Tech. What were your thoughts with Virginia Tech and the win over Richmond, man? The Hokies won 10 Yeah, yeah. I First of all, thank you guys both so much for having me on. I, I really appreciate it. The chance to chop up a lot of Tech football with two legends, it doesn't get any better than that. So when it comes to that Richmond game, though, I think we'd all like to kind of forget about it. And it would be nice to be able to put that game behind us, I think, with a win this weekend if Tech were playing. But, you know, that bye week, I think, is coming at, at the right time. They, they needed a chance to reset th- some things. Yeah. Emotional opening win against North Carolina. And then I think that mid-Tennessee State game was kind of about what we expected. But, you know, West Virginia, you fall behind early in that first half, basically didn't show up, and then turn it around in the second half, come all the way back only to fall short when you have a, a chance to score – inside the five yard line and have four cracks at it, can't get it done. The fact that you come out and then have another lackluster offensive performance against Richmond, you can understand why people are frustrated this week. Yeah, no doubt. When you talk about frustrated, Justin Hamilton's defense has looked every bit of what we expected with him having a full off season, but there's a lot of heat around the offense. Now here's my take. And I love to hear your take, Danny. And I know Mike and I talked off air as well. You can criticize Brad Cornelson. You can talk about plays, but Virginia Tech did miss a horrible fake punt. The the call was great. The throw was terrible. Um, There's also been a lot of left points on the board, on the floor, on the the field, going back to the Carolina game. Um, I feel like as much as the criticism should be with the offense, I feel like um, Brumice needs to play better. I think he's not seeing the field. He's missing some throws. I didn't play quarterback, but I know – what a quarterback looks like. Not just because I got one on here, but, you know, you know the game, Danny. What do you think about when it comes to the offense? Well, I, you know, when it comes to Braxton Burmeister coming into this year, I actually thought that everything set up pretty nice for him. Despite the fact, you know, you have Hooker and Patterson departing. I, I still really liked what, Burmeister brought to the table in terms of his experience and he brings that athleticism doesn't have a uh, he doesn't have the Mike Vick arm like let's be honest right he can't launch it down the field quite as far as as Mike could but he is he's a guy that could definitely get in and run Fuentes offense successfully yeah I think some of his decision making is still maybe a little bit behind where we'd expect it to be right now Uh, I've seen some drop passes too Overall, the offense just hasn't really been very consistent. I mean, whether it's the passing game from Burmeister or the running game, they've got talented backs like Jalen Holston there that they can give the rock to and they can get downfield and and really make plays, especially if you get them in open field. But they just really haven't been able to establish anything consistent. And I think that is definitely a a concern offensively. I really do like what I've seen, though, from Tavion Robinson. And I'm sure a lot of people would have the same feelings about that, especially after watching him take that punt to the house this past weekend. But he makes plays in the passing game, too, and I'd like to see them get him the ball more when he's on offense, whether he's in the slot, bring him in on one of those end arounds, or if you're going to get it to him downfield. No doubt. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask you, Danny. What what you think about the offense? I know because he just asked that in in so many words. Like, the offense is, you know, it's doing what what needs to be done. But what you think about the defense? Let me just shift gears to the defensive side of the ball. If you just give your assessment on that. Yeah, yeah. You know, the the defense has has been a different story, I think. And and Justin Hamilton obviously had had the the tutelage of, of being under one of the best defensive coordinators in Bud Foster. And I, I think you see a lot of Bud Foster's scheme within Justin Hamilton. And and then there are a few tweaks here and there where he's kind of personalized it and he's he's kind of, you know, made it so that his players can thrive. He's put his his guys in the best position to make plays out there. Right. And there, there have been a lot of times, though, this year where I feel like there's been no pressure. You know, I, I remember in that UNC game, we're all sitting there watching that, that first week, and Amari Barno was, was all over the field. I mean, he was an absolute stud, 
And I think he's still poised to have a great rest of the 2021 season, but his last few games haven't quite been as good as that game against North Carolina. So I'd like to see a little bit more of a pass rush because, you know, Dax Hollifield is as good as he is there as, as an inside linebacker. He's also a little bit limited. He's not the fastest guy out there. He, he brings a different skill set to the table, if you ask me, and yeah. his ability to stop the run. Um, but that, I think it starts up front. So defensive line play, I think, needs to take – another step forward, not that they've been playing poorly, but, you know, Virginia Tech has for a long time, at least for the last 15 or so years, really been predicated on their ability to play defense. And Justin yep. Hamilton, I think, is is definitely kind of keeping with that tradition. Stepped in nicely. Yes, sir. No doubt, no doubt Danny. Um, one last question, man, before we let you go, man. Um, in our segment of Noakes Notes, <laughs> um, I do want to ask you about this. Virginia Tech, we won the primetime game to start the season against uh, UNC, Friday night game. Nation was watching, and the game which kind of kicked off college football. It was a sold-out crowd. Justin Hamilton's defense showed out. Brumeister managed the game well. He got an impressive win over Carolina. Now we start to wonder how good is Carolina after that bad, bad, ugly loss to Georgia Tech. Yes. With that being said, Virginia Tech's three and one. They're one and zero in the coastal. UVA struggling. Um, you know Miami doesn't look the part. At the end of the day, you got a sellout crowd coming. Not this weekend, but next weekend after the bye week. Virginia Tech, despite an ugly win, it's a win. They got a chance to beat Notre Dame, a team. Regardless of what happens with them in Cincinnati, they have a chance to make a statement. What do you think happens this? Not this weekend, but when they face off against Notre Dame. Yeah, you, you laid the situation out beautifully, too, right? I mean, the fact of all this is, and there has been a lot of criticism for the last few days, but Virginia Tech still controls its own destiny in the ACC Coastal right now. And my goodness, is the ACC more wide open than it's been in a long oh, time, man. boys? Clemson's not what they used to be. Yeah. So if you're, if you're a team from the ACC Coastal this year, you get into the ACC Championship game, I'm thinking anything can happen, right? So – You've got to play the rest of the year, and, and Virginia Tech's last two games, as, as I watch this UVA-Miami game, are against Miami and UVA, both of those games on the road. Those games scare me a little bit, but this Notre Dame game, I think actually really is controlled by Virginia Tech because of that sold-out crowd, the atmosphere, coming into Lane Stadium. There are a lot of factors, I think, that, that are going to come in to the Hokies' favor in this game. Now, Notre Dame's an incredibly talented team, and they're going to be more talented than Virginia Tech. But they're not going to be more talented than a Clemson or, or some of the other teams that, that Virginia Tech has played over the last few years and, and on that national stage. Notre Dame being one of them, by the way. They've now lined up against the, the Fighting Irish almost a handful of times on, under Justin Fuente, as a matter of fact. So I think you come out, you have to against a, a team like Notre Dame, and you got to start strong. But when you look at what the Fighting Irish have done this year, they probably should have lost to Florida State. They've also played a couple of other bad teams to close games, but they also have been tested. They have a game, a big game against Cincinnati, a top 10 squad. How good are, are the Bearcats? We're, we're still not quite sure, but, you know, I think it's all there for Virginia Tech for the taking right now. And that's, yeah. you know, uh, people get frustrated with, with this coaching staff and, and with Virginia Tech over the last few years, but all things considered, man, they're not in a bad spot at all. You come out, you go play, you execute – and they'll be in this game at the very end. No doubt, D. FYI. Yeah. FYI to Virginia Tech Nation and all those kids that's going to dress out and be on the field. And Notre Dame quarterback is pretty good. So on the defensive side of the ball, let's go. Let's get it. Hey, hey, we got to prepare like we never prepared before. He looked like young Phillip Rivers out there. I'm not tooting his horn. What I'm saying is get ready because you shut him down and you shut down the passing game, we got a game. So – Danny said that in so many words, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, sir. And he did a great <laughs> job, man. I love you, man. Looking great in that victory. Appreciate it, Danny. The man yeah. cave is good. Yeah, we yes. will see you again next week and breaking down the Notre Dame, hopefully a Notre Dame loss to the Hokies, man. But we appreciate you for jumping on the Vic 757 show, Danny. We'll talk to you next week. Danny, yes, sir. Be good, baby. Yes, all sir. Right, Thank man. you both. Thank you both so much. Yep. I'll talk to you all soon. No, all, right, all right, all right, all right. So... Next up, Mike, I'm about to let him in the locker room. Is uh, him on a, in. a very special player, man. Uh, I'm really hyped to get him on, man. This is somebody they were talking about uh, when you were uh, doing the uh, Undisputed show the Monday morning. We are joined now by 
one of the best receivers in Virginia Tech program history. Trey Turner is joining us right now, man. Really excited about Trey jumping on the Big 757 show. Trey. Yo, 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 what's up? How you doing? I'm good. I'm good. How y'all? We're doing great, man. We would love to have you on, man. We're glad you jumped on, man. This has been a lot of fun so far, and you just made this show even better, man. Um, you Honest to you, man, because you are our first current player to join the VIX 757 show. I know you yeah. and I chop it up on Twitter, man. Um, I told you when we were preparing to get you on, I'm a fan, even if you weren't a Hokie. I'm a fan. I remember when Tech signed you, coming from North Carolina, and um, that catch you had was great, man. Um, before we talk about that catch and everything like that, um, how's your time been at Virginia Tech so far? Because I know both Mike and I played back in the day. You know, y'all call us the OGs and everything like that. But we played back in the day. We were building a program. And, you know, we didn't have inter man. We didn't have all the different uniform combinations. We were building it. And you guys have come in now and, 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 and taken what we started and now y'all trying to create your own legacies there, man. How's it been to be a Hokie so far? Exactly. Look, well, first off, I'm gonna start off by saying I appreciate y'all for having me on the show. Like, y'all legends, but I, I, I'm sorry, Dwight, but Mike, like, you, you was my first football player I ever watched play football. So this Thanks, whole. Bro. Well, this whole little situation got me nervous. I, I'm, I'm nah, nah, you good, man. Be yourself, man. This is all things tech seven five. We like the white say we appreciate you coming on, baby. Look, so I, I know we're supposed to be family, but I'm telling you, like you, you like you the one that really got me locked in this football. Like I wasn't me and football wasn't I wasn't that wasn't my connection. But yeah, first time I seen you play, I was like, okay, football looked fun. Like that was my first that was my first time realizing football might be a fun sport to play. Hey, that's why we play the game. We play the game to entice others and the next exactly. generation. Exactly. Hey, Trey. Yeah. Hey, Trey. Hey, Trey, it's all good. Look, hey, everybody wanted to be Mike, man. When Mike came on the scene, don't nobody want to be a lineman taking on three techniques? <laughs> 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 but I will that's say, I may, be a, I may be in a lineman be sexy. You know what I'm saying? You know, yeah, yeah. Cuz, hey, cuz, you got to own it. You got their own, right. it, cuz. You know what I mean? Right, we'll Receivers. Bet, we'll bet that, hey, right. everybody got their own swag and their own right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. No, exactly. no, it's uh, it's 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 outstanding to have you on, man. So just talk about your time at Tech, man. Like, you know, I know we're gonna. I'm, I'm gonna ask you a few questions, Mike and I, about this season, man. You guys are off to a great start, despite some struggles against Richmond and some slow yeah. starts in the Middle Tennessee. But what's it been like to be a Hokey, man? I mean, you talk about your admiration and love for Mike. Um, you played with some great quarterbacks. You've been around some great players yourself. You are a great player. What's it been like, man? Look, this this whole this whole situation I've been in since I came in as a freshman has, has been a blessing. And all in all honesty, nothing but a blessing. That's the only way I can describe it. Like I came in not even knowing if I really wanted to play football. Like I came in thinking I was gonna play football and basketball. So whenever that went out the window, like just being a part of VT football, Virginia Tech as a whole, like they welcome me as family, and there's been that type of vibe since I've been here. And it, it's nothing but love. Like I go out in public, I go to restaurants, and they all know who I am, and they treat me well. Like it's, I got family with me, but they don't treat them well too. So it's just like since I've been at VT, it's been like a like a true family vibe, and like I, I love it up here. Like that's why I never even thought about leaving. Like. That, that's that hope. That's that hokey vibe that's been passed down exactly. for generations. Look, that's what I'm saying. And it was it was rumors about me transferring out. And like I'm not going to lie to y'all. Like I was I was honestly thinking about like leaving because the people that recruited me to come here, both of them coaches left. So it was like I didn't I didn't know if like this is really for me. But my main recruiter, uh, Coach Wiggins, he went to Alabama after my freshman year, and he yep. told. When he told I remember. me to stay here, when he told me I need to stay here and, and make my own legacy, that's when I was like, okay, well, I'm gonna make V Team my home for real. And after that point right there, like I saw this and nothing but home. And the opportunity I got to be here is just a blessing. That's why I, I leave it at that. Trey, you said you can ball? Nah, I'm a hooper, bro. He a hooper. So you came hey. you came from football and basketball? Hey that's Mike, hard, that's a hard thing to do. Mike, look, he can look, hoop. He can hoop. Look, he can hoop. Look, look, really? Look, yeah, everybody look, said look. he can hoop, though. Can you no, hoop no, Trey? no, 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 no. I'm vouching. I'm vouching for Trey. I Go seen ahead, it, look. and I got my people down in NC that told me he can hoop. Him and Hendon. I know Hendon's no longer at Tech, but 
I, I got several reliable sources. He can hoop. No doubt. No <laughs> doubt. Give, we so both tell me a couple of your accolades real quick in a short. How, uh, high school, state oh, championships, oh. anything? I don't got a lot of accolades when it comes to basketball. Like, I played for uh, I played for Team CP3 for three years. That was that was like the biggest accolade I got. Uh, high school, Greensboro, North Carolina. We had this thing called uh, High Sports Extra, and uh, I was a yeah. player. I was a player of the year for the whole conference. That like nice. city of Greensboro. I was I was a player of the year. So that was my biggest conference. That was my sophomore year of high school. So good that work, was, good was, work, was, good work. Basketball, but in that like. <laughs> It was just me figuring out like basketball was my sport. Let me go ahead and really lock in the football. So that's that's how it all turned out. Hey Trey, I see the I see the is that a Strowman jersey behind you? Oh yeah, that's a that's a G Stroman jersey right there. Hey, but, uh, that's my guy. Shout out to Greg Strowman, man. You know, um, that's my that's like my 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 mentee. I mentored him, his whole family. I love him. And now you got the younger brother up there. So Virginia Damn. Tech. It continues that family legacy with cousins and brothers nice. and uncles. It's amazing. Nice. So Trey, you all, you guys are off to a three and one start. Um, you guys yeah. are one and zero in the coastal. Um, you guys beat Carolina again. I know that's a big win for you because you're from Carolina and you got a lot of people back home that check for that game. Um, you all your goals are still in front of you. I know you guys wanted to beat West Virginia and remain undefeated, but you got Notre Dame coming in after the bye week. You still have the ACC Coastal in front of you. Um, what's you guys' mindset right now? What are you guys thinking? I mean, you're a leader on the team. You're coming off a great game against Richmond personally for you. Um, are you guys hungry? You hear the people criticizing the offense and the defense is carrying y'all. Like, what's your guys' mindset right now? Uh, as of right now, well, when I speak from the whole team, as the whole team, as a whole, we're focusing on ourselves and how we can all get better. But when I talk about the offense side of the ball, like we all, we see the criticism, we see everything that's going on, we see what they're saying the problem is. But we know, we mo we know deep down as an offense, like the the biggest problem is us executing as a whole, like eleven people on the field at one time, like like the play calling. People got a problem with the play calling. Like, uh, it it doesn't matter. Like we all know, like what plays should be called, what shouldn't be called. But like no matter what play is called, like eleven guys got to execute on the field at one time. So. Whenever the plays is called and one person messes up, if it, it messes up the whole execution of the play, so it's all it's all about execution. Like like when you execute as a as a whole unit, then that that helps the offense operate as one. And and we haven't been doing that a lot. Like we we have little bits and pieces every every now and then of us all executing executing. But when we mess up, it's so obvious. Like you can see, like we'll have a quick three and outs, three and outs, three and outs, but. The times we score a touchdown, that's the full job execute. Like that's what I'm trying to say. But it's it's, it's really all about execution. Uh, the coach is gonna call the players they call. We just gotta execute them and as a whole. But whenever we looking at it, we we watch the film like as a unit. We watch them as a as a position group, and then sometimes I go in and watch with other position groups. But we all see like it's 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 like we this we this close to getting to that point where we're gonna be unstoppable. And, Nobody's stopping us but us right now at this point. Trey, in preparation for Notre Dame, you look you looked at the secondary yet and what they look like? Because I know it's Thursday, so you, you got to be a step ahead in terms of your film work. What are they looking like on film? Uh, for sure. I mean, they play they play hard, of course, because I mean they, they got a legendary head coach, Brian Kelly. Like, they're gonna they gonna they gonna play hard, but in the in the back end, they got a great safety. Uh 14. 14 is a really good player. Like I feel like he's he probably all American after this year. He okay. plays side on the sideline type. So that's the big that's the big 14 is the big person in the back end. He, he's 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 the glue. Yeah, like he he holding the whole thing together. But when it comes to like the corners and the other safety and they play they play a scheme to where like they two outside linebackers are both like safety size. Like mm -hmm. it, it's number 27, number 24. It's two linebackers, but they they play like safety. So, so I got you. Okay. I know what I, you're saying. I, it's easy to like see what they're trying to do. Like you can see they're trying to scheme the offenses up that they play against. But when, like I know, I know our all offense coordinator, like he's he's big in the scheming up a defense. And the white sound like an eight-man front, don't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm I'm I love I'm loving this, man. You know what I'm saying? Because it takes us back to when we had to break down film and right. do our study stuff and look at and identify the fronts and decide adjust and all that stuff. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Look, man, 
Trey, so let me ask you this, man. I, I'm, I'm so, I told you I was excited to get you on because, you know, we no longer play. I'm, I'm, you know, I analyze and podcast around my mouth. So when you were out there, that game, that game against Richmond, man, like, um, I was, I was texting you how me and Mike were talking about that catch because Mike was on, uh, undisputed, not undisputed on first things first Monday morning, and I uh, forgot the guy's name, but he covers all the New England and Boston sports, man, and he was talking about his top plays are from the weekend. And he yeah. went to your catch when you walked in the air against Richmond, man. You had, a, you had over 100 wild. yards. You had over 100 yards receiving. You had six catch. You had a touchdown. You know, uh, you know, how's that feel, man? You know, I know you expected, but you know, to to get praise from Mike, who was you know a child hero of yours, and then to be all over the country and everybody talking about that catch. And that's not the first time because Mike, I don't know if you noticed, but this his nickname is Big Play Trey. I first saw him when he had the one-handed catch UVA in the corner in the end zone. So, Trey, how does it feel, man, you know, I mean, to be making plays early in the season? And, and is this what you expect? Is this what you feel like, you know, I, give me the ball, I can do this every chance? Well, when it, when it comes to, like, uh, just adding my whole football career college-wise, like, I didn't I didn't come in expecting, like, to even play my freshman year. Like, I, like I was so raw, I didn't know if I was going to touch the field. And then – I get to the point I got a whole nickname my freshman season. I'm like, bro, I don't even know what to do at this point. So then I, <laughs> I felt like whenever the fans was giving me a nickname, I had to like, I, I really had to like make sure I lived up to that name. Like, and I had to keep getting better and better over the years. But when it came to this year right here, I, I was like, this is this is like the finished product. Like, this is just like who y'all gonna get? And mm-hmm. when, it came, when we got to the Richmond game, I was I was so. I don't even know how to explain the anger of how it was after the West Virginia game because it felt like it felt like I had no impact. Like I, I felt like I, I didn't do anything to help the team in, in any positive way in the game. I, I I had no opportunity to help the team, so I felt like whenever whenever the Richmond game came, like whenever I got any opportunity, I was gonna make the best out of it. Like I, I was gonna make make it happen regardless. And, and I'm not I'm not trying to toot my own horn, but you saw what happened whenever whenever that. The film come on the Richmond game. Like I was, I was going hard at yeah. team. Hey, Trey, you can talk. You can toot yes. your own horn. You can let them know. <laughs> yeah, I'm man. A, I mean, you, you earned that. Hey, you, you earned that. Hey, I'm gonna tell you and my man from the seven five Robinson Tavion. He was my hoagie shout out last week. I, I, God bless, God bless Mitchell because I know y'all miss him in the red zone. He's a versatile player. Prayers up for the tight end we lost. A great playmaker, but at the same time, we got you, Blackshear. Robinson, Holston, you can you can look that swag and confidence you play with. I watch you. You play angry. When you play angry, they can't guard you. Keep that Take same energy, you. man. That's what I'm saying. I, I be pissed off on the field man. at all times. I be pissed off. Take it with you. I find something to just make me mad before the game even starts, and I be I be tight the whole game. Just and and the coaches think I'm mad about what's going on. I'm like, no, I'm, I'm just pissed off. Like just it's give a me concentration me. level. Make something happen. <laughs> I'm like, just give me, just get the ball in my hands. I'm about to make something happen. That's what I tell. I tell my receiver coach that all the time. I'm like, bro, I'm like, <laughs> just let me see the rock. I'm, I promise it, it's gonna be good. I promise. I, I, I won't let you down. Like that's that's the type of time I'll be on. But that Richmond game, it was like I, I was I was in a whole different type of mode. It was like I was like, when you give me the ball, I promise I'm gonna score. Like that, that's that's what I was, that's what I was telling. Like when you give me the ball, I'm gonna score. Like and every time I got a target, I was just trying to make the best. Like. Make something happen, regardless. And you saw what happened. Like I, like I was telling my teammates. You can ask anybody in my receiver crowd. I was telling them before the game even started. I was like, bro, I don't know how many yards I'm have, but it's definitely gonna be over a hundred. It's like, going down. I'm gonna have over a hundred this game just because, like, I'm like, bro, like this is a stat game. It's gotta be. I don't yeah. care how many targets I get. I'm getting over hundred yards. And I, that's that's the type of confidence you gotta have, man. And as I listen to you talk, I can tell. You got it in you. you. You you know what it takes to be great. Let me ask you this question: Who are the receivers that you idolize next level? Who you try to pattern your game after? Next level, uh, I'm gonna pick three. I'm gonna pick three. Well, I all right. I'm gonna pick three after this first one. The first Go one, ahead. you got it. Your floor is open. Julio, John, Julio, that's 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 he. I can see that he he up here, and I, I'm trying to like. I don't want. I'm not saying I'm modeling my game after him, but I take. I take. No, so, that's okay. That's okay. I take so many notes that. off his game. I watch his one on ones and practice and everything. I take so many notes from Julio because, like, 
That's what's up. Like putting your head down and running, making like you about to run the whole goal, and you run just a simple. Yeah. Time. It kills DBs. Like, like he's good at that. He's he's good at his his craft. I watch him. I watch uh, Devontae Adams when it comes to his releases. Mm. His releases is crazy, and, and he does the same thing every time. He just reads off the, what the defender about to do. And I, like, I'm trying to get to that point where I can I can just easily do that in my career. Uh, Devontae Adams, I like him. D Hop. D Hop is just he he gonna go D Hop. D Hop just gonna go make it happen at all times. So yeah, I feel like I feel like right playmaker. Now, and I feel like right now in my game, whenever the ball come my way, I'm gonna make something happen. And I feel like that's what D Hop man every single play. Come on, man. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking I about. Love I it. like that talk, Dwight. I like that. I love it. I love it. And D Hop it's funny because everybody he named he has pieces of their game because D Hop right. plays angry. D Hop right. plays angry. And then Julio can go and get it. He can he can just muscle you and get physical. And then, you know, a, a Adam, hey, he the best route. I mean, to me, I don't I don't get involved in that receiver talk, but I mean, he look, bro, he is special. <laughs> he is. He is. Devontae. Who are you talking about? Hey, uh, hey Trey, we got a few more questions before we let you jump off, man. Um, I wanna I wanna I want to ask you this, man. You know, you mentioned the transfer portal. You know, when I played in the late 90s and Mike played in the late 90s into the early 2000s in college and he went on to the league, uh, we didn't have the transfer. Guys transfer. We didn't have the transfer portal. It mm-hmm. is no different. It's just now with social media, Twitter and IG, guys have more opportunities to leave. And I respect that. You know, you got to do what's best for yourself. Mm-hmm. But has it been hard because you have played with Hendon Hooker, Ryan Willis, uh, um, uh, Quincy, you know, Q that transferred. Now you have Brummeister. I mean, you played with almost six different quarterbacks. Was Josh Jackson there too when you were there? Yeah, I was, yeah. I was just saying, yeah. this other day. I didn't play with seven quarterbacks. Seven That's crazy. That's, That's unfair. It's unfair <laughs> to you as a receiver. I mean, no. I, I, I wouldn't say it's unfair. Like, I, I understand, like. It's hard. It's hard to like, like, to get a a fluid motion of being a wide receiver. Yeah, it's it's, it's like, unfair. Like getting a connection. It's but unfair. When it comes to Virginia State football, like I, I completely understood, like everybody leaving, everybody like right. Yeah. Like, yeah. I was never gonna be the type to just lead the whole scenario. I was I was always gonna stay down, grind it out. Like the way this whole the way the football situation works now, it's like. I don't know. I don't know if it was different when y'all was playing, but it's like right now, it's like you got to do whatever it takes to win the game, no matter if you was happy about it or not. Yeah, I'm never gonna. I'm not gonna be happy about blocking a safety or a linebacker. I'm. That's not my game. I, I'm. A, I was made to run routes and catch the ball, but whatever it takes for the team to win the game, like, I'm gonna do that. Like regardless, I'm gonna do that. Yeah. But or, or, or mad, like, it don't matter. It's gonna. It's gonna happen. It's gonna get done. Hey, I know I'll say this, man. Mike, Mike, Mike and I had a talk several years ago when he was working out uh Tyrod Taylor and uh shout out to Tyrod and uh I, th- I forgot his name, the young in that played at Ohio State, the receiver. Uh I mean the quarterback. Uh Troy, not Troy, but I forgot his name. But Mike, Mike said this, Trey, and he was like, basically, when it comes to NFL scouts, they know the game. And if you win and practice hard. And they look and they turn the film on, they see your attributes, they know you coachable, you versatile, you can do more than go deep and run a nine route. They're gonna rock with you. Like, cause they yep. they look at winners. And that am I right, yep. Mike? And that's what they look no, at. No, that's that's the truth. That's the truth. You said that correctly. I mean, they they recognize everything. And it's all in what you put in it. And what it, and that's what you're gonna get out of it. So, you know, try, I think you I think you grasp that, you know, everything that you embody and you know, going into this next game, give us uh, the Hokie Nation, your family. Give us two, the three things that you think has to happen to get out of the stadium with a win. You talking about another damn game, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. For us, for us to get out of there with a win, we just gotta be us. We got, we gotta be us in, in all aspects when it comes to offense, defense, special teams. Like we just gotta be us and play the best we can and be. In a us aspect, like okay, players on the field at all times, offense, defense, yep. teams doing their job, working out, executing, and, and, and killing the opponent. Two, uh, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say, defense just gotta get getting quarterbacks head off the early. They, they O line don't look like yeah. what 
to be like they just got to go ahead and get in the backfield and just make noise early because I, I done seen our D-line just go crazy and I, I know what they can be. First game was just a taste of what they can be and they haven't they have right. all they haven't all been up to that aspect since the first game. But I know like okay. I know how hard they all can. step it up another notch. Just step That's it up a little bit. I know we can all, all turn up a whole notch. And yep. when that third, the third is just making the plays when they gotta be made. You know, like yeah, when it comes to a, a, a third and one, fourth and one, like little, little plays like where we gotta we gotta get that yard. Like I feel like it has to happen. Like West Virginia, we left so many opportunities on the field, like with a yard left, three yards, two yards, like we left so many on the field, like that can't happen when we play this opponent coming up. So, yeah. So, I so you like, know what you do, right? You know what you do? You find your man, Burmeister, because like, he got to be your man, because that's, that's my quarterback. Dog. That's my dog. Put him in the headlock. You say, let's go, baby. That's what Get I'm him saying. going. I you know what I'm saying? Right right the game. That's what the used to do to me. Hey. I wasn't even playing. He just smacked me in the back of my helmet. Let's go. I'm like, I ain't playing. But, what are you talking about? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> right, 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 before, right before the Richmond game, I walked up to him. I'm like, bro. I'm like, bro, I, gra- I grabbed him by his face, man. I said, bro. See, that's what I'm saying. I said, bro, be you and let's get right. Okay. I walked off. I, I walked off after that, and, and he did what he did that game. So hey. you got a little bro. You got a hey, little bro. I love it. I love it. You know Trey, uh, Trey, last last question, man. I, and it's just a fun question. You mentioned your admiration and love and respect and how much Mike influenced you, man. I was on Twitter. I know you and I, we follow each other. We chop it up on Twitter, man. Um. You saw me retweet that uh, ACC highlighted that run Mike had against Boston College, right? What is your favorite, including college or or uh, pro? What's your favorite Mike moment, man? Was it the comeback, the miracle in the Meadowlands two? Was it the run against Minnesota in overtime? Was it a Virginia Tech run? What was it, Trey? Yo, I'm telling you the first the first NFL football game I watched all the way through, Michael Vick. Uh, Philadelphia Eagles versus the Washington Redskins. I I think it might have been it, it was a it was a weekday. It might have been a Monday. A Monday night. Monday night. Mike Vick uh dropped back for a little little fake little fake hand play action. Oh, threw a little set up the bomb. Like he threw that. He he launched that. <laughs> he <laughs> I thought I I thought I overthrew Deshaun Jackson. I thought I overthrew him. Fastest man. Over. He got the fastest he got man ever playing in the NFL. Speed, he got that. That's that's somebody's film that I've been watched. I watched oh, man. Jack since the first day he stepped on the field till now. Like I'll, I'll watch all his film, and yeah, he still looked the same. Like he's still running the same type of speed. Yeah, but that was the first play. That was the first football play that I ever watched all the way. Like wow, I never for football until that play right there, and I'm like, yo, wow, this guy's a dog. I watched that whole game. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, yo, number seven. I don't know his name, but like. I like that guy. My dad, my <laughs> That's dad, my guy. But, but my dad was like, he used to, he's been in the league. He used to play for the Falcons. And then I'm like, what? So I started looking. I look you up and everything. I did a whole – my sophomore year of college, I did a whole research paper on you, bro. You don't, you don't even know. I did a whole Man. paper on your, on your life after you got out and all that. I did a whole – I had to talk for 10 minutes. I talked about you for 10 minutes about the afterlife. Yeah. You know, it went down, so – I appreciate that, Trey, man. Hey, I really do, man. Me, me, me and Dwight, we appreciate the love, man. No, I we do, man. We do, it, bro. we do. And I, I'll just say this, Trey, a little nugget. Uh, every time Mike would come to the D.C. area to play, because I live in Northern Virginia, I would go meet him at the hotel the night before. And we're in the hotel, we chopping up, you know, and he's talking about the game. And he told me, he said, hey, cuz, because we got something for him first play. They, only, they ain't even ready. And I kept looking, like, listening. I'm like, what are you talking about? He said, trust and believe. We're going to hit him first play. And I was going to come to the game, but it started raining. I said, nah, you know, I, I don't need the tickets. I'm going to watch it at home with the fam. And then first play, he did that rollout to Deshaun Jackson, man. Shout out to Deshaun Jackson, great player. Shout out to DJ. And, and Mike hit him in stride. And I was on Twitter, Facebook, any media outlet. I told you he was going to come back. So I'm with you, Trey. But shout out to you, man. I'm proud of the player and the man you're becoming. Um, on behalf of Hokie Nation, man, we appreciate you jumping on the Vic 757 show. Um, I'm going to bless you with some Victory Life merchandise. It's, it's going to be coming via FedEx, man. We're going to talk about some other things. This is not going to be the last time you're going to be around me and Mike. Trust and believe that, man. Keep those guys focused, man. You got a lot more Good luck. supporting you, man. Do your thing. Show out. 
Don't be afraid to demand the ball, but also demand more from your teammates. Be a leader and keep those guys focused on and off the field, man. All right? Yes, sir. Yes, I'm going to always do everything I can in my power to help me and my team to, to be what I know we can be. Like, And I appreciate y'all for having me on the show tonight. I, I just appreciate this whole opportunity. I, I'm nervous right now being a fanboy, so this is this is all just a blessing and all that all aspects. Best of luck, Trey. We'll be watching, man. Appreciate the kind words. All right, I I'm appreciate boss. It, man. Go Hokies, man. Sure. All right, y'all, of course. Yes, sir. What a great a kid, kid, man. Great young man, yo. Trey, Trey Turner. Great just young man. Great, great, great guy, man. Great player, man. And um, I am a fan of him, man. The, the humility he's showing and just the fact that um, the one thing that stood out to me, cuz, is that he could have left because in this day and age, man, you know, he had some of his teammates and friends that left. And it's hard, man. The guy that recruited you yeah. left. And, you know, I tell people all the time, including my own son, and it's different now. I mean, you right. and I and a lot of our teammates and brothers, we didn't have the the the, the turnover. Coach Beam and his staff stayed uh, for 20 plus years, almost 30 years. A few guys left yeah. here and there, but you know, you had your OC your whole time yeah. there. You know, and and the thing and the thing that really stood out to me was he played with seven different quarterbacks, and I'm like, that's unfair. He like, no, nah, it's not unfair. It's it's kind of it is what it is, and for him him to hear him say that you know, shows that he got respect for everything that's going on around him, his surroundings and all circumstances. And, you know, that's something that every kid can learn from right there. You know, that's not, that's an unselfish moment we just had with him. And uh, it says a lot about him as a young man. Yeah, no, it does, man. And the thing about it is, man, is that at the end of the day, <clears throat> when I when I talk to young men, I know you're the same way. You and I both love giving back and mentoring, not just athletes, but young men and young women. His his character says a lot. So even when his when it's time to hang those cleats up, I can see him doing a lot of stuff like what you're doing in the media, yeah. community service, mentoring, man. But we're not done yet, cuz we got two more guests jumping on to wrap up the show and also do our hokey shout out some trivia. Uh we I'm just gonna let him jump on. Let me I'm, ask I'm, you a quick question. Let me ask yeah. you a quick question. Yeah. You think that 98 team y'all was on could have beat 98 Notre Dame? My, my 98 team because I, I know you probably remember how good Notre Dame was and because you don't forget nothing. You know what? I felt like we should have went undefeated. My you, you, my my senior year, your your freshman, your redshirt freshman year. Your senior year. My senior year, we should have been undefeated. We should have we should have been 12 and 0. And Corey Moore and Eagle Berg and those guys were special. And at the end of the day, I feel like if we healthy and Al Clark stays healthy and with that defense we had in that offense, you know, guys, I, 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 I never, I mean, I never, I never felt like we were, you know, I didn't ever felt like we, we couldn't, you know, uh, lose to anybody. So right. if there was a team I would have loved to play. It definitely would have been Notre Dame, man. Um, so well, well, I'll <laughs> say this, you know, the, before we move on to our next guest, the game that hurt me the most, not being able to play in, was watching the loss against Syracuse on the road. Oh, bro. That was a heartbreaker. <laughs> that was a heartbreaker. That was a heartbreaker. <laughs> Donovan threw up. I, I mean, I thought I was seeing some legendary moments. I'm like, you know, you see guys playing hard and giving up everything they got. And I'm like, man, this is what college football is all about. <laughs> it scared me a little bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it... it that loss to Syracuse really hurt, man, because that loss to Syracuse hurt because if we win that, we go to the Orange Bowl and we play Florida, man. Yeah. Um, All right, moving on. What's you know, good? I like bringing up old stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, what is good? So we, we have joined us right now one of the best defensive ends and defensive players in Virginia Tech history. Also a 757 guy, VA guy, one of my favorites, played with a chip on his shoulder. Chris Ellis is in the yeah. building. What's yeah, up, Chris? Chris? How we doing, gentlemen? What's going on? Hey, Chris. What's, What's up, up homie? How you been? Hey, where you at, man? Yeah, I'm over here seeing you. Ferguson on stomping ground. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Man, I knew that background looked familiar. What you coaching <laughs> over there? I got, I got your old locker. I'm in here. Yeah, <laughs> man. You, I, I remember that wall. It's about uh, it's 200 years old. Yeah, it's still the same working yeah, on the inside. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. 
No doubt. <laughs> I see you paying it forward. Good to see you, bro. Absolutely. Same, bro. Same. You look good. Hey, Chris, you, you, you and I were texting early in the week and we talked. I, I, so what exactly are you, you coaching? You you said seeing you. So you, you, what are you, what position and, you know, how long you've been there? What's going on with you down in there? That's what's up. Oh, man, I'm, uh, I'm coaching D-line right now. So, you know, sticking to what I know right now. But I'm just getting back across the border. I was over there in the CFL for a minute to this COVID thing hit. So got to go backwards to go forward. But I'm enjoying it, man. We're getting out here two and two. So we're hitting the conference running. What, what you like about coaching right now? The learning curve. I get to get them when they don't know nothing. By the end of the season, you got to know more than what we started with. So I'm enjoying the learning curve just to see how I'm able to articulate, you know, what I know from how to see the game to ultimately the X's and O's as well. So I'm enjoying it. Yeah, man. You, uh, you, I know you're going to be a great coach, man. I, I, I've had talks with you. I've actually interviewed you when I used to be a columnist, man. What people don't realize, man, you're a very, very insightful person. Like it ain't just, you know, when you on that field. The alter ego come out, but you and I mm -hmm. talked about life. And now you can be humble now, but you and I know, and your opponents know you are very insightful and intelligent. Like you, you see the big picture, man. So I'm not surprised you in that you in that coaching tree now, man. Have you been? Have you bumped into uh, Elton Brown and Brendan Hill and them down there, man? Because you know they down the street from you. Yeah, they close. Man, you know I'm already trying to settle up Battle of the Bay. We need to scrimmage and get after it every year. I don't do that. Move. Don't do that. that, that I'm man, they, I ain't got no. They got some itty bitty dudes over there. <laughs> if y'all play them, y'all don't beat them ninety to nothing. It's gonna be real <laughs> disappointing in your defensive Go line. Take them fresh off of work. However they get there, just line them up. Just line them up, man. We're taking them by. <laughs> so you no, already no, no, y'all are hey, 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 Dwight. This is the thing. They come straight from work. Yeah, come on. They come straight from work, straight to practice. Like, you know, we used to go from school to practice. They go from work to practice. Hands I mean, in the trunk. You know how shout I out, yo, in the trunk. Shout out to the apprentice school. Like, Absolutely. them some tough dudes over there. I went and watched some practice, and I spoke to them, and, and they, they give a lot of effort over there. I will say yeah. that. Yeah, I They can beat you on really. effort. They can beat you with effort. <laughs> Absolutely. I, I seen you chop it up with him, man. I've been talking back and forth with Brendan. He's dipping his yeah. toe in the game. Big E, we always been in contact. So I'm just trying to heat it up. So hey, we got no reason to be right up the street. We can't touch pads at least one time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, you got to. You almost got yeah, to. Now, I've never been a big fan of defensive ends because they was always chasing me. But <laughs> I got mad love for you because you're – you part of the Hokey family. You are brother. What about? Don't worry. It broke curious to know. Like, curious round. to know. What, what's – what and name the quarterback that you hit the hardest in your career, whether whether it's college or pro? Uh, I'd be like, uh, what's his name? Sam Baker. He was down there at UNC. He was a quarterback, I believe it's Sam Baker. Um, he was probably my sophomore year. Sophomore yeah. year, bought him out the end zone. He trying to throw, you know, trying to take that big shot on the one, bring that twist up the middle. If we hit him right up under the goal post, you hear that look. <laughs> so yeah, anytime you take that, I mean, we, I, mean I shouldn't be laughing. <laughs> I shouldn't be laughing because I know it happened to me before. Yeah. It wasn't because of Dwight, I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> All day. All hey, day. man, Chris, you know, um, I think when I look at your story, um, guys like you, um, you know, Jimmy Williams, you know, James Gale, guys, you know, from the Peninsula District, from that Bethel High School, a great high school when it comes to legacy players. But in a lot of ways, when it comes to your legacy, you created your own path because – in a lot of ways, you were overlooked. I mean, you had the measurables, man. You were 6'4", athletic, long. Um, you played with an attitude. But when it, when you go back to your recruiting, I know now, you know, we got all this, you know, Twitter hype and everybody's the next one up. But you earned your path, man. Um, did you did you enter tech with that mindset like, yo, they're going to remember me? Because, you know, a lot of people slept on you. Yeah, man. It was like the more I look at uh, they were – Showing an old film, we played Heritage. We're eight and two with Jimmy at quarterback, then getting the playoffs. And the more I look back, I was like, man, I'm just longer running around, see ball, get ball. You know what I mean? But then mm -hmm. you get to college and you see brothers that's already on the grind, making a name for themselves. Jimmy already got a name for himself. We come behind Mike, Mark in there. You know what I mean? So, one, you got a expectation of rep when you get there because you ain't coming up there to sit in no bench. You know what I mean? But then yeah. when you get there, you're seeing guys putting in the work, Dale tapping them guys, man. It's like, how am I going to get on the field? I'm trying to eat at the sophomore. So I was able to start as a sophomore. So that was just the mindset. I'm coming by Bruce Smith, Corey Moore, Cornell Brown, Engelberger. So it's like, I'll just take whatever's left on this tree. You know what I'm saying? But I'm going to get it. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, man, you talked about, you know, Cornell Brown and John Engelberg and Corey Moore. Good God, those are some great players. And all those guys I had to go against, man. <laughs> so yeah, I always – hey, look, I joke. I joke, man. I, I I remember my dad called me, or I called him from Cochran, the old athletic dome. He said, how's yeah. it going? I said, I'm about Shout to – Shout out to Cochran. I said, I'm about, I'm about to take I'm about to take a, I'm about to take a strong red shirt because <laughs> Cornell Cornell, man, uh, <laughs> a.k.a. Monster was special. And then, you know, he moves on. And then I'm the older player, the more experienced player. And then here comes Carl Bradley, uh, Nate, uh, mm. you know, Corey Big Moore, boys. Engelberger, Chad Beasley, you know, um, the D line. Mm. Shout out to Coach mm -hmm. Wild for the D line, man. Like, <laughs> tech, tech, the defensive line was special. When you talk about being part of that legacy, Chris, man, um, when did it hit you when you were at Tech that you were among some of the better ones? Because it goes back to the 80s when it comes to Virginia Tech's defenses. When did it hit you, like, when you had that moment, like, yo, I've arrived? Like, you know, they're going to now, not, you know, not just because you were all ACC, but was there a moment in practice? Was there a game when you were like, yo, they're going to remember me now? You know, I, I've arrived. It's crazy because it happened way too early. But our first game, I'm getting reps now as a young and I'm just rotating in. But our first game was against USC and FedEx. Mm. Yeah, making a tackle on Reggie Bush and on screen. I'm like, oh, yeah, all right. So we just got to get active then. I'm out here. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, it ain't, the moment ain't too big. I ain't too slow. I ain't right. too long. It's, now we can do it. So yeah. everything is long uphill from here. You know what I mean? So that was yeah. first game, first time uh, in FedEx. And then we just rocked from there. Yeah, I, I can see why you was a great player. That just the mindset, it's like, it's it's coming out. I, I know you was close with some of your tech buddies when you came in. Like, who, who some of the guys you still connect with, still have a friendship with to this day? Because those friendships last a lifetime. I know I still got a lot of guys I deal with who came up in my class. Who some of the guys you still kick it with to this day? So, yeah. Some of the hope that yeah, people might cool. know, too. Yeah, we got a group chat. We got Harper in the group chat. Harper, my homie DJ Parker, so we be on it heavy. Uh, DJ, yeah, DJ C. Hold. Who else in there? Eddie just jumped in there. We got a yeah. couple cats in there. Um, uh, we got uh, Rizzy, so he up in there. <laughs> we got CG in there, so we got a bunch of cats, man, that we nice. came in with. That we chop it up with just about the good times, the old times, the current times. So it's good to just get them perspectives, man. We can laugh at how it was when it was on the keep that brotherhood. Time. Absolutely. Keep that brotherhood ascending. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Hey, hey, you know, Chris, man, I want to ask you this question before, uh, uh, before we talk about the current Virginia Tech team. They're three and one. They got the bye week, then they got Notre Dame coming to town. Um, you mentioned uh, some guys, DJ Parker, man, my, my, my guy, he was on the Victory Life Legacy Spotlight. I love that dude. Uh, just one of the best safeties to ever do it. But if you talk about Virginia Tech, man, when you were there, there were some moments you had. I remember laughing. And, and laughing like, yo, this guy. So there was the game. There was two games that come to mind. Uh, the first one was when y'all played Florida State, right? You remember you had the interception when they tried to uh, – yeah, yeah. yeah, and you got the interception. The yeah, they tried to get this screen, and you just jumped up and picked it. That was a great moment. But probably the moment where I felt like you put yourself on the map, and it happened so organically, was you guys were ranked, I think, eighth in the country. Y'all had an early tough season loss to – to LSU, LSU. Ooh, yeah, 44 yeah. to 7. The only person to score was Tyrod Taylor. Yeah. But you know what? You guys came back that year and y'all got hot. And y'all had the big matchup against Matt Ryan and company on Thursday night. They were ranked number two in the country. Y'all remember were that. Top 10 matchups. It was in Lane Stadium. It was a tough, it was a tough loss, but the defense did their job. You know, Tyrod had the high ankle sprain, so he was limited. Sean Glennon did have the touchdown pass to Eddie Royal, but offense didn't really get it done. But that night, you were in Matt Ryan's face all night. Yeah. Um, I remember that, man. Like, it was, and if I'm not mistaken, was that the game when you turned to the camera and you did this right here, the money thing? Yeah, what that man? It's got to go on record. What that man? A lot of people get that confused with Johnny Manziel, but I dare you to go by, back and find somebody before me who did it on Thursday night. So, <laughs> yeah, man. What, what was you up, saying? Man. Like, it's time to get paid? Or yeah, it's defense? part of the grind. I'm going against guys in the chair list, first-round draft pick. Yeah. I'm going against Dwayne Brown every day, first-round draft pick. This moment, um, Heisman Trophy candidate and uh, Matt Ryan, we on center stage Thursday nights or all night. That's yeah, you earned your it's money. Raining. It's raining, so it is what it is. So yeah, that's all. All eyes is on us. Everybody's in the stands. It's time to uh, it's time to get paid, man. 
bro, I know I know your defensive line. I know they over there just super confident, ready to get it. Hey, I got they, them they got what they got about four, five sacks already. Yeah, I got them holding gaps and believe it, man. That's half of it right there. I said, just hold that's gaps it. and work from there. That's it. Absolutely. <laughs> that's what's up. Absolutely. Hey, man, that's I love that up. moment. I mean, I hated that we lost, man, but you guys got the revenge in the ACC championship game. Um, you know, that's one of them typical Virginia Tech seasons with the what if behind it because by that by the, by that year, by after that tough loss to LSU, man, you guys were playing great football and that defense was loaded with talent. And that when you did that, when you did this right into the camera, I was at home like, yes, sir. <laughs> I stood up. I was yeah. like, because, you know, even when you're done playing, especially when it comes to somebody from your hometown or your area, you get sights, man. And yeah. I, I, I always felt like even when I was done playing, when I looked behind me, I saw Mike and them do it. And then Lee Suggs and all them. And then you guys came. And then the guys after y'all. When you look at Virginia Tech now, the guys after all of us, they're three and one. Last year they went five and six. The bowl game streak was snapped. Um, they dealt with some serious COVID stuff. You know, everybody was dealing with. Um, Bud Foster retired the year before that. Yeah. It's a new regime. You got Coach Fuente, Brad Cornelson, Justin Hamilton, the new coordinator, taking over for the legend Bud Foster, doing a great sure. job, by the way. For sure. But when you, when, you know, just, you know, you being on the Vic 757 show, Chris, you've never been a person shy on your opinion. What are your thoughts about Tech, not just this season, but what where they are right now as a program? Yeah, man, I was just on the eyes watch. I wish I had been back more, you know, get on campus and actually see it up close, get a chance to watch them cats in practice. But just on the eye test, you know, we're able to break down some film and stuff. It's just more like um, it's the attitude, man. And, you know, I'm going to start from the defensive side of it because I felt I played with uh, Marcus Vick. Like, that's the only quarterback i seen get tackled and push up off the tackler. So, like, it was a mindset. <laughs> even on the offensive side. So, you know, just that attitude that if you come out here in the mountains, man, you stuck out here with us and our back up against the wall, and that's how it's going to be in any game we in, whether it's we win 3-0 or we got to win 30-33, you know what I mean? It just – they haven't seemed to establish that as one, whether that's guys being out during COVID, whether that's transfer portal, whether it's recruits, whatever it is, they got to realize, man, you put on that maroon and orange, man. For that time, then three hours, whatever we doing, that's the attitude. And that's the only thing I can really, like, correlate late to like my time when I watched you guys that was steady throughout no matter what the record was that's what you knew what you were going to get and as far as you know getting that right now it's just you know I, I think they're building they're trying to build back to that with so many pieces missing you know specifically Butterfalls. Dwight we was mean man yeah we was mean bro I mean he said it about Marcus and shout out to Mark you know he sometimes he took it a little too far uh, <laughs> um but he was a he was a tone setter, and sure. whether it was Drake Kendrick or whether it was Carl Bradley or John Engelberger with us or somebody was setting a tone. Somebody was angry about something, sure. and it, it translated into us really whipping teams real bad because we was mad about whether it was Coach Gentry making us run them hills or somebody had too many Wednesday mornings in the week, but it's still starting. We had an attitude. That was out of this world, and that's what you got to carry into these games. Yeah, sure. and, and don't and, and and you know what, cuz you're right because I think you know when I talk about this on Twitter, when I do radio for other podcasts and shows, everybody on that comes on this show, and everybody I talk to in the group chats, like Chris, or whether it be Facebook or Twitter or whatever, wants to see the program do well. I'm happy they three and one, but I think at the same time, I just want that attitude back. I think they show glimpses of it, like when they play Carolina. And we, and just for our viewers, we're not talking about nothing dirty. We're talking about hokey football, that mindset. Right. Like when you talk about Marcus and DJ Parker, when, when you know, Carlton Powell and, and, and the Martin brothers, when they went down to Clemson and smacked Clemson in the mouth, you know, Macho Harris, 100 yard, 101 yard kickoff yeah. return, DJ Parker, a pick six to set the tone. Eddie Royal, two punt returns in Attitude. one game. Should have had three. You know, it wasn't just about being physical. It was like, we're going to come in, we're going to take your turf, we're going to take your heart, and we're going to take your crowd. Ain't nothing you're going to do about it. Sure, you know, we lost some close games. And, you know, like I said, the teams Chris was on, they were special. That Boston College game, I'm sure Tech fans hate it. I mean, I talk to Tech fans now. Tech fans still hate Matt Ryan. He was just playing ball. They hate them. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but at the same time, you know, 
it was the expectation and the legacy they carried on, man. So, yeah. you know, Chris, you know, you talk about, like, you know, your time at Tech, your coaching now. I always ask guys this, that coach, and I feel like young people get a bad rap because, you know, you get older, like, oh, back in my day, like, we were reflecting. I'm not going – because I, I think we just had Trey Turner on before you came on, yeah. and he embodies that mindset we're talking about. And there's other guys there that, that embody it. But at the same time, there is a transfer portal. There is more social media access. There is more, more eyes on you. However, I always feel like the young people – get a bad rap as far as, oh, they're not coachable, they selfish, they soft, they weak. You know, we didn't have we didn't have this many water breaks. How is it coaching these young guys from your perspective? Yeah. Um are there a lot of similarities? Is it just a new time with the same issues? Yeah. You know, what are you what are your thoughts? It's tough, man. We got, you know, when it gets too hot, humidity, you know, they'll cancel practice. Now, I don't even know what that means, but they, <laughs> the, the protocol is they got to cancel Go in practice. Indoor. So, Go indoors. Yeah, so so when it comes down to that, some stuff just out your hands. But as far as like the kid, man, you're just trying to find a kid that loved it the way you loved it, you know. And if you can start from that, you can always reach back on the kid and motivate them in some way or form or fashion. So I'm just looking for kids who love football. I asked my kids, you know, right out the first meet, who love football? Everybody raise their hand, two hands, go up. And then we get to week four and they slipping on this. Or they late for practice. Or they lazy in a drill. And I got to go back to when I asked you, you told me you love football. So – like, is this an example of your love and how does that translate to the rest of your life and just try to tap into something that they, they claim they want, but then I'm going to hold you accountable yeah. that when we in it, in practice, doing football. So that's something I can always, when I find the kids who actually love it versus like to be a part of it, then, then the kids I know I can grab and, we, you know, it really it can go as high as, you know, the kid want to go. In so many words, Hokey Nation, Chris is saying you got to have the right attitude. Everything <laughs> that you just said embodies an attitude how you get up and get dressed in the morning, how you get up and go to class, how you approach practice, the way how we approach this. It's the attitude. You got to come in positive or negative. It's going to show. Most of the time you got to err on the side of being positive. So it's a positive message, Chris, man. Be proud of what you're doing, man. And I, I didn't know you was down the way coaching, man, down in uh, in East End, Virginia. But, man, that's our hometown. That's where we all from. And, uh, you know, keep doing what you're doing and helping those kids down there for sure. Absolutely, bro. Hey, before yeah. you know, before we uh, you know, before we get into uh, breaking down um the matchup, uh, uh we are joined late but still on time. Oh, one of the really? legends, <laughs> Cornell Brown, joined us. I didn't know if he was going to be able to get on, man. Cornell, can you hear us? <laughs> Brown, can you hear us? Hey, what's that? Brothers. You know Cornell ain't up to date on technology, <laughs> big bro. What's up, you big bro? No, man, I be Where trying to come from. There you go. There you go. Hey, y'all already know. Jerry, trying to run from all this stuff, man. <laughs> yeah, nah, you got to do us a favor. Yeah, man. <laughs> hey, where you at? We got two of the two of the greatest, greatest defensive yeah, ends to play tech on the call. Well, y'all all all seven five seven. It's called Virginia. Man, y'all got to branch out, bro. <laughs> yeah, I mean, look, we extend out to Lynchburg and Roanoke, and you know, we man, it's all <laughs> love, baby. Hey, we know hey, Virginia. Virginia. We hey, look, like Mike said, man. You know, you big brother, me, man. You Antonio Banks and hey, good and all you, man. You y'all, yeah. you you my big bro. So like, you you know, look, you know, we love Lynchburg, man. You know what I'm saying? And like Mike said, you and Chris Ellis, two of the best to ever do it, man. It's an honor yeah. to get you on, man. Hey. Yeah. Hey, Cornell, hey. we ain't, we ain't going to ask you to do too much talking. We're going to talk for you. So all I got to right. let the hey. Hokey you know, Nation know. Okay. I got to let the Hokey Nation know Cornell Brown was my one of my biggest mentors in my life. When I was coming out, Dwight – you know, had so many conversations with Cornell in terms of what I was about to get into. He would invite me down to Baltimore, show me, the, you know, what the side of what I was about to get into. And Cornell, that meant so much to me, man. It, it, it changed me as a person. And then I had a chance to play against you in 2002. I don't know if you remember, but I know you remember because you talk so much trash in that game. Hey, Chris, <laughs> this man would not set up on the field. <laughs> and he abused our offensive tackles. 
Uh, I found out what Cornell Brown was all about, but Louis. shout out to my big brother Cornell Hokey Nation, man. This this is our big brother Cornell Brown. Yes, he oh, is one of the best to ever do it. Oh, man, hey man, y'all humble me too much, man. Y'all know I love all y'all. Y'all my boys. I hey, I just be happy how y'all be repping the whole thing. And we and, and it's coming out like we always thought it was, right? We yeah. the each Ooh. one teach one, right? That's all it yeah, is. Absolutely. I, yes. I just have to get back, whatever. Just to see y'all boys blow up and keep doing and, and Billy really what y'all help build the tradition of. And now look how strong that Virginia Tech brand is. That's because yeah. you know, through the years, just how everybody is, the camaraderie, how close people are, man, and how much it means to everybody. That's what it's all about, bro. And and, and I know. That's what everybody always giving back. That's that's the thing really about Virginia Tech that's always been special because it, yep. it's been really the people you go do it with that really make it the most, and the fans and all the way they support it. That's why that that program has been what it is, you know. And so yep. y'all y'all boys help me because yeah, I love y'all boys the way y'all are, and that that's why that's a special place. Hey, yeah. Cornell. I, hey, salute to you again. I was telling uh. Chris and Mike, Chris was jumping on. I was just telling the story, so he heard the tail end of it. Uh, I was telling uh, Mike, right as Chris was coming on the show, I knew I was going red shirt. So back then, the freshmen reported a week before the varsity player. So the, the starters came late. So Cornell, Hank Coleman, and all them came late. So, you know, I'm walking around. I'm an All-American, first team All-State. I got the cutoff shirt. Me and Derek Smith walking around. I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm fitting to play this year. You know, I ain't seen Hey Good in them yet. Yeah. And Mike Byanchin and all those guys. So Cornell come in, and, you know, now the whole team is there. That's how you find out you're going to red shirt. So we scrimmaging, man, and Coach uh, Coach Bustle wasn't back yet. It was Coach Gary Trinkle. He put me and Derek, we, we in there. We in there with free in there. We in there with the ones. Yeah. And I, in front of me is J.C. Price. And on the other side, beside him is Cornell. Beside me is Derek. And that center is Todd. And, you know, all of a sudden that humble pie start getting real big. And Cornell, you talking about talking, Mike? I know exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> Cornell is like, I can't say what he – I really want to give our listeners and viewers the, the real uncut story. But Cornell said, oh my God. you're going to put these – Young bees in front of me. You're gonna put these young bees in front of me. <laughs> yeah. He said, Hey, look, he they him and JC doing stunts, <laughs> Cornell talking, he pushing me in the back. And you know he hate us because you know I'm from Hampton High, the crab. Right, right. Yeah. So he talked crab, you know what I'm saying? And look, yeah, he come back after the third play. Big D look at me, said, Man, I want to go home, man. <laughs> <laughs> I, hey, I want to go give it up. Hey, look. <laughs> so that night, as I told you, right, was Chris was coming on our show. My dad, I was on the phone with my dad, you know, checking in. He said, How's everything going? I said, Y'all, I'm about to take a strong red shirt, man. I'm about to. <laughs> 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 hey, I knew again, man. I'm telling you, man, people talk a lot about uh, Maurice Chasezo, how big he was, and Mike Vick, Tyrod, Kevin Jones. The list goes on and on, man. Um, but I will say this. I've gone on record. And Virginia Tech, like a lot of great universities, has a long lineage of players. To me, the game changer, because I saw Cornell play against Iverson in the state championship. The game changer to, for me was when Beamer was able to get Cornell to come. Because that gave birth to the Chris Ellis's and all the, mm -hmm. the Corey Moores and the Engelbergers yep. and the guys that came after him. And uh, it was crazy, Cornell, because I, I remember looking at you I remember when I got older that that second year I was able to block you a little bit better. I felt like okay, like like Chris, like I arrived. I can I got you my got hands stronger. Up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but the C Brown, I know you busy like Chris, man. Have you been able to check out Tech this year, man? What are your thoughts on the program, man? I have, man. I I you know I liked it what they were doing. They you know they playing good ball. They playing team ball the whole the whole deal. You know, they got some players out there on the field and, and they controlling it. So, you know, they had the tough one in West Virginia. I don't know if they really knew what they were going into in West Virginia, man. That's, yeah, that's like, been a oh, while. <laughs> we all know what that's like going up there, boy. That thing is a whole different beast. 
Yeah, yes, it you is. Just be happy. You just be happy to make it out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they beat up and all, boy. They going to battle you. Them are rough and tough up there. And so the we- last few years, Tech been dominating. So yeah. you know they gonna always come out and try to represent. Yeah. Cornell, where you at right now? What you doing? What you got going Man, on? I'm down here. I'm in Texas. I'm coaching the D line at Talton State. We play. Um, we play. We go to uh, Eastern K- Kentucky this weekend. We play EKU uh, Saturday. Out that way, okay. out in uh, Richmond, Kentucky. But All yeah, right. man, I, and I'm um, two hours outside of uh, Dallas, Texas. So I'm all the way out in Texas now. Yeah, yeah man, I can't keep up with you. We can't keep <laughs> up with you, but we know where to find you. Yeah, you're lucky you're in the country. <laughs> hey, that, that's what it is, man. Hey, another kid, school in the cat, almost like Virginia Tech. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> no doubt. Well, hopefully I can be joining you one day, saving space no on doubt, me on the man. staff down the road. Hey, we got we got two great great players that have become two great coaches, man. So look. I got it. We got to jump into one segment that everybody likes, man. I'm glad I got you both on because I get to do hokey trivia with Chris Ellis and Cornell Brown. I'm going to test your minds and your trivia. (laughs) I'm going to see what you know, Chris, even though I know you. Hey, what you do? Let's see if you can earn that that money right now, man. Hey, hokey trivia, man. So look, here we go. All right, check it. In 1995, Coach Bud Foster was named co-defensive coordinator, right? That's 95 when he took over. Who was the defensive coordinator he replaced when he became the coordinator? Was it A, Ron Zook, B, Coach Rod Sharpless, C, Phil Almation, or D, Mike Clark? Hold on, Courtney. I'm going to start with you, you Chris. One buck first. Let me get them names again. A, Ron Zook. Coach Bud Foster replaced either A, Ron Zook, B, Rod Sharpless, C, Phil Almation, or D, Mike Clark? Phil Almation, C. So you going with Phil Almation? Let me get my yeah. pencil down. My pencil. Yeah, Phil Almation. All right. Mike, who you got? Phil Almation don't sound like a real dude. But I'm pretty sure y'all defensive guys know something about the history. Don't look over my shoulder on the test. I'm going to say Mike Clark. Mike right. Clark. Okay. All right. Cornell, who you got? See, y'all know it ain't fair for me because them old ones, I'm going to know it. Yeah. And you know Mike Clark is the coach that was out in Bridgewater. Yep. So you know I am already know the answer to it, man. Yeah. <laughs> no, well, that's, well, who is it? That's a big boy. <laughs> it's Mike it, Clark. It ain't Mark. It's Phil Almation. Okay. Phil All Almation. Right. Listen. I'm going to give him, like the youngest say, I'm going to give him his flowers right now. Another reason I knew I was going to red shirt, Phil Almation was one of the most intense coaches I've ever been around. On that staff at that time, you had Todd Grantham, Phil Almation, J.B. Grimes, Bud Foster, Rod Sharpless. It was bananas. Fights, Mm. fight arguments between coaches. Coach Almation, one time we were on scout team, I was red shirting. We were messing up. You know, Grantham cussing us out. The GA is cussing us out. Phil Almation ran over there. He said, get him out of here. Have him sprint the whole period. I'd rather have a bunch of rocks in front of my D-line. Look, <laughs> Phil Almation was one. But look, real talk, I met him in high school. He came to Hampton High. And I know Coach Bud Foster, who's been on my other podcast, he, he shouted him out too. Before Bud Foster, there was a Phil Almation. He is, still remains one of the best defensive minds in college football. A lot of what you saw, the eight-man fronts, the exotic blitzers, but Foster built off what Phil Almation did, man. He was uh, just shout out to Phil Almation, man. Just a phenomenal person, man. Uh, great coach. All right, all right, all right. Here we go. We're gonna go to the offensive side of the ball. See if y'all got this. The Virginia Tech all-time career passing touchdown leaders with fifty-three touchdowns is a Tyrod Taylor, B Don Strock, C Gerard Evans. Or D Logan Thomas. Mike, I'm gonna start with you first. The all time in career touchdowns. Total touchdowns. In their career. At least Tech. Tyrod. I'm gonna say hey, Tyrod. All right, okay. Chris, who you got? Going with the homie too, Tyrod. Okay. Seen a bunch of touchdowns. Cornell, C Brown. 
Look, bro, it ain't about the crib. Y'all can't be going <laughs> just for the crib. Bro. <laughs> this is facts. This Evans. is facts. I got the boy Jared Evans. Gerard Evans. Yeah, All Gerard right. Evans. This this answer surprised me. The correct answer is Logan Thomas. What? Oh, there it is. Oh, with 50, oh, with 50 Logan Thomas. Oh, it's a touchdown. Yeah, I Logan Thomas. Hometown. Yeah, uh, see, I showed the LBC some love. Lynchburg, shout I showed Logan. Lynchburg some love. Yeah, got <laughs> shout out to Logan, yeah. got his hand in the dirt and catching passes. Yeah. He kept hey. the touchdowns hey. and throwing them. Shit. Hey, yeah. Logan yeah. Thomas, no. man. Yeah, all That's right. Cool. We're going to keep, now we're going to go back to defense. I'm going to hit y'all with a true and false. It's our first true false of the Vic 757 show. True or false? Cornell, I saved you for last because you probably should know this, or maybe you don't, because Ron Yale thought he was an all-time leader. <laughs> yeah, he uh, did. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out to Ron Yale Whitaker, man. Uh, Cornell Brown, true or false, is the Hokies' all-time sack leader with 46 sacks. Am I? Yeah. True or no false? No way. Bruce is the Bruce Smith, bro. So you saying it's Bruce? Yeah. Who you saying, Chris? Going Bruce. Mike, who you got? Yeah, I'm gonna say Bruce. Without question, it's Bruce. Absolutely. Bruce, <laughs> Bruce got 46. Number two is Cornell with 36. Number three is Corey Moore with 35. Woo. All right. Still what? Cornell number 11 Cornell is three years old, like 22. 12 sacks a season. That's a man. I mean, 36 Yo, sacks man. for you, Cornell. That's amazing. Hey. Hey. Bruce Smith had 22 sacks at D tackle and the wide tackle six. Yes. Oh my God. God. <laughs> That's why he's the first pick of all. <laughs> yep. Yep. Unblockable. Hey, Bruce Smith was he, he another one, boy. He boy, listen. God yes, made sir. him to wreak havoc. Yeah, he's special, oh, man. Yes, all sir. right, we almost done with the hokey trivia, man. All right, here we go. This VT player ranks first in career punt return yardage. All right, so this is the punt return in Virginia Tech history, that's number one, okay? Is it A, D'Angelo Hall, B, Greg Stroman, C, Eddie Royal, or D, Bo Campbell, all right? So, again, is it A, D'Angelo Hall, B, Greg Stroman, C, Eddie Royal, or D, Bo Campbell? Mike, who you got? I'm going to go C, Eddie Royal. Okay, all right. Chris, who you got? About to text Eddie real quick. <laughs> <laughs> Using his phone call. I've seen a bunch of them. Well, he gonna, I don't have to fight him in if I don't say it. So I'm going to go Eddie Royal too now. I got okay. It. All right. C. Brown, who you got? All right. I'm going to have to roll with the old school Bo Campbell. Yeah. Uh, Bo Campbell was a great one. Shout out to Bo Campbell. All right. On all the highlights, ain't he? Hey, the correct answer is Eddie Royal. Eddie Royal oh, is number yeah, one. Right. Yeah. Number two, Magic. number two is Greg Stroman. He was right behind him. Shout Ooh. out to Greg Stroman. Greg Stroman was a baller. Yeah, 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 man. So yeah. Uh, all right. So what two, two out of three? Bro, three out of four. Thing, huh? <laughs> you get somebody Open got to total that up. Do the same thing. <laughs> what you say, Chris? I said somebody got to total that up. That's three out of four for me, ain't it? Then I yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, you got it. You got it. I, yeah, you got it. All right, yeah. So that's, yeah, I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> I got to go know, on somebody's wall. <laughs> hey, hey, you more, hey, what LeBron say, you more than an athlete, my dude. You more on, than an man. athlete. Absolutely. <laughs> I'm trying to get one up. <laughs> hey, man, so look, man, um, guys, man, you know, the, the Hokie Brotherhood is real, man. Like, um, I, I, you know, Cornell, you said the best, man, like, the older I get, the more I appreciate it, man. Even like I was joking earlier, but I was dead serious, you know, when Chris was on TV shining against Matt Ryan and DJ Park and those boys, man. I, I, even the kids there now, man, I want them to do well, man. It, and it's a blessing. Oh, seeing, it's a blessing seeing you guys coaching because I have I have Frank Beamer, Coach Frank Beamer, on my other show, the Victory Life Legacy of Spotlight, and I asked him, and we talked off off air, man. You got Torian Gray. Shane Graham, Chris Ellis, Brendan Hill, um, high school, Lauren Johnson. I mean, the coaching tree from Virginia Tech is for real. Yeah, just you know, and man, um, yeah. and it's just amazing, man. You know, and I'm just honored when I see guys doing it, whether they're at CNU or the apprentice school or 
JC and them, Pierce and Prelo back at Tech. It's just a blessing, right. man. You know, blessing. Um, all yeah. day. Yeah. Hey, and then you got your boy Nick Sorensen tonight, special teams coach at Tech. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no doubt. Shout out to Nick. Right, man. Thursday Dude. night. Yeah, yeah, man. That's what's up. Shout out to Nick. You know, Nick Nick was yeah. my guy, man. Nick did everything nah. at Tech. He punted, <laughs> played quarterback, gave Mike the signals. I mean, Nick did everything. <laughs> hey, look, though. Speaking of shout outs, man, um, we're going to wrap the show up, man. Um, we, we have a segment where we just, you know, you can shout out anybody from Tech, alumni, coach, one of your teammates, your brothers, um, you know, who you know want to shout out? Chris, I'll start with you. Is there somebody from Tech, a coach, some of your guys, you know, you want to show love to real quick, man? Yeah, it's a couple of them, man. I got to start out with Bud, man. He done stood on the table for me many times. So, <laughs> I wouldn't I don't even, look, going there laughing, but I don't even finish Tech if it ain't for Bud, man. So, it started with him on the way down, man. Coach Wild. For getting me hit the game to OG Cornell, bro. I don't even make it out of college if you don't come in at that time. So I appreciate it, <laughs> gentlemen. Then, like, hey, Macho Harris, about to get inducted into the Hall of Fame this year. Shout out to him. He came right behind us. You know, my whole rookie class, man, we red shirted and we did our thing at Tech, man. One of the best players I ever played with, too. I got to do this. Vince Hall, man. He looked like you would attack him every day on offense, Ooh. but my man could play, man. He could ball out. So that was a pleasure. That was a pleasure. But yeah, that, that's the shout outs, man. Yeah, Vince Hall, man. Vince Hall, him in Vegas. Yo, I mean, him in the DB, excuse me. Yeah, but Vegas, absolutely. too. All those yeah. guys, man. All of yeah. them. Yeah. Yeah. run through. So, yeah, shout yeah. out to my class, man, that 03 class. No sure. doubt, man. Hey, Mike, who you got, man? I'm going to stay in the same train with the coaches, man. I got to shout out Ricky Buss because he was one of the most animated and – the way you talk about coaches that was just fierce and compassionate about what they was doing and just yeah, 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 yeah. I did not think I was going to survive because of Coach Bustle. I didn't think I was going to make it as a quarterback until Coach Bustle looked me in my eyes one day and was like, you can do this because I was about to quit. And it was because of his enthusiasm. It was because of his belief in me that kept me going because I was about to go home. People don't know. Stories untold. I'll get into this story one day. I was about to leave Virginia Tech. Football was too hard. The quarterback position was too hard, and Coach Bustle kept pushing me. He said, come to the meetings. Just keep coming. And one day it clicked. So that's the story for another day. But shout out to Ricky Buss. There you go. Hey, yo, I love it, man. Yeah, hey. Rick, yeah, Coach, Bustle, Coach Bustle was tough, man. Coach he was Bustle a good was coach. Tough. But he was, he's a great coach, man. And, and sticking coach. with that coaching thing. You and Chris started off, man. I want to shout out J.B. Grimes, man. Him and Coach Stein spring both. Shout out to Coach Grimes. J.B. Grimes, I still check in with him every now and then. Coach J.B. Grimes and Coach Stein spring. I had him my last year, but both of those guys, man, they showed love. I learned more about, like, dealing with the, the Cornell Browns and the Waverly Jacksons and the Jeff Hollins and the Lawrence Lewis's, that whole death row defense. And then when they left, like before Kristen got there was Corey Morning, but JB Grimes was a technician. You're talking about, I don't know if you can even do the stuff. You, the stuff we did back then, the stuff he said, you can't even do now. But it was tough love, man. Like he took us out an hour and a half before practice. I'm talking about after meetings. We the only guys out there along with the kickers. And we're going <laughs> through our steps and we're going through this and that. And he was so hard on us, man. And he was going against Cornell and them. And Corey Moore and all those guys, when it came to the game, it won't nobody I was afraid of. Like, and I, and you know, during those times in the Big East, before we joined the ACC, the Big East was a gauntlet. You had, you know, uh, Stills and Henry Slay and Thornton at West Virginia. You know what I'm saying? Miami, Damian yeah. Lewis and Kennard Lane and Holmes and Ray Lewis and those boys. You know, so in UVA had, uh, what's my man's name? Patrick Kearney. And, 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 and all those guys. Okay. Yeah, but I was so prepared because of JB and Steinspring. Steinspring was like the good cop. He joking with you. So he put his arm around you after JB Grimes and laid you out. Steinspring came over there. It's all right, big fella. <laughs> but you know, it's funny, man, because it's not just about football, man. It's the brotherhood we have. It's also the mental. And when things get tough in real life, you know, when your check engine light come on or the money's slow or you don't know where you're going to go, you remember those conversations 
those long nights and early mornings, man. So I think I know I speak for a lot of Hokie Nation as far as the players. I think a lot of us are successful because of our upbringing and also what we were coached to do. So shout out to Coach Grimes and Coach Steinspring. Cornell, who you got, man? Man, hey, I'm going to get y'all on the coaching train. I'm going I'm to stay on it, man. I'm going I'm to shout out my boy Todd Grantham back in the day. He was he was rough and rugged, just the foundation. Definitely um, shout out uh, Phil Almation, who really put the toughness in Virginia Tech, right? He really wanted to change the base and the whole thing of it. But somebody to me that really was the glue of all of that, and everybody on here I know, is your man John Berlin. You know, he kept it all the way. He, I was going to say, I butt, thought about man. John, man. You can hate him some days. But oh, man, John man. Berlin, yo, he, he, he real glue Shout with people for the whole, the whole tote tech deal, man. Glue. All of it. Shout out to John Berlin. He is yeah, the glue. Bro. <laughs> I'm dropping the mic. Yeah. Yo, he's like the mob dude behind the scenes getting it all done. You don't know who, who yeah. he's guarding the bodies and all of that. John Berlin, yeah, all of that. Yeah, he, he got all that. Shout that out to John Berlin, aka yeah. Proctor. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, John Berlin knew everything, man. I don't, he knew stuff that went on recruiting visits. He knew where your girl yeah. was at. I don't even know how he knew everything. Him and Bruce, man. Yeah. Shout out to Bruce Garns, man. Yeah. Yeah. We won't ask no questions. <laughs> and we won't ask no questions. No doubt. They, they, hey. they try to make you feel like you, you got somewhere at home, man. <laughs> nah, man. Hey, once again, um, I appreciate Cornell, you and Chris for jumping on. I know y'all busy with coaching. Um, right. it's, you know, but at the same time, man, the fans need to hear from y'all, man, because Y'all are still doing great. I, I'm glad you guys are still keeping the legacy going, coaching and mentoring, being father figures and leaders in our community, man, because, yeah, we love playing ball, but we're so much more than football players. And, and fans need to know that. And I know the fans love it. They love this show. It's because of great guests like you guys, man. So thank you on behalf of me and Mike for jumping on, man. You know, it's all love no matter what. Um, we appreciate the support, man. And Hokie Nation, once again, text off this week. They back at it against Notre Dame, man. Support the teams oh, and players. Shout out to Danny Noakes that came on earlier. Trey Turner, you know, shout out to him, man. And like we say every week, man, go Hokies, man. We appreciate y'all. Go Hokies.